now right and i will share the screen as well and uh, just a moment people i need to make some settings over here just a second people Oh no, which I have to do it uh, manually. Right, okay. I'll keep the note. Right. <coughs> so, uh, the main memory, cache memory, and the registry memory. As I told you, uh, registry memory is inside the CPU. So, those three memory types are being taken as the volatile memories right so they are involving in uh, when a process is going on inside the computer and they uh, keep things in their memories until the power is supplied once the power is disconnected or in other words when we shut down the computer the things inside it will be erased right so that is why like uh, if you if you doing if when you are when you are doing something if you suddenly got a power break right or, or a power cut still if you don't have an uninterrupted power supply to uh, save your things into your computer ups when when power goes off so your computer will eventually <coughs> not eventually like it will instantly power uh, uh, will shut down or like not being shut down will get off right so if we on it later we won't be able to uh, see the things that we have done right it is because the things we were doing for that moment is in the main memory which is an unvolatile one so if we had no chance to save it into a secondary memory when the power goes out the things are inside the main memory will be washed away or like will be erased away Right. So as an example, then we will have a game to play. Right. So when you are playing a game, so game has several levels to be saved. Right. So if you are playing it without save, you know, like if you are at the middle of a level, if the power goes out, so you have to play the mission from the beginning. Right. From the from the very last point that you save the game. Right. Same goes with all other applications. Like if you are working inside a Word document. Like you can save like time to time uh, things that you are doing. So in case if you if if you had no chance to save what you are currently doing is, uh, then when the power goes out, when you reopen it, most of the cases you won't find your uh, content or in a way to recover it. But then uh, modern uh, not modern uh, the, the the latest version of the word is allowing you to. Uh, recover the things that you have done. If you have a save karan word processing software, if you save it, you can a temporary file in case power failure you can recover it. Right? So it is, it is given that kind of uh, benefits uh, and then that kind of facilities, right? But uh, <coughs> sometimes if the, if the content is huge, uh, there will be a problem for them to save as well, right? So uh, the best thing is when you are working with a, a computer which has no UPS connected to it, it's better you save it frequently and go, right? Otherwise, the things inside the memory uh, will be uh, taken away or like will be washed away when uh, due to a power failure, right? So... Uh, yeah, let's uh, take down things. Ah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell you uh, what the cache is. Now, cache memory, we are going to talk about this in the second lesson as well. Cache memory will uh, remember things which happens frequently, right? So that means if you are working with a particular application, if you just close it, uh, what 
whatever the program which is closed recently will be remembered by the cache memory. So if the CPU need the same program or the application to be executed inside the CPU, then first it will refer to the cache memory to check whether there is a particular application program resides in the cache. If it is there, then it will be taken from the cache and will start doing the work. If it is not there, then it has to go, it has to take it from the RAM. RAM make it native, no? You can RAM make it the end in a hand. Once you request, hard disk will be given the program to the RAM. Right? Our program make execute karanava kila kian nema. You are telling the applications inside the hard disk to come over to the RAM and then let them do what they are supposed to do, right? So, as I told you before, remember RAM, cache, and the registers inside the CPU are volatile memories, and the secondary storage are called non-volatile memories. There is some other component called ROM, which I have not mentioned here, which is the read-only memory. Again, we can uh, categorize those uh, ROM, that ROM, with a non-volatile memory, <clears throat> right? So that will be explained when the time comes, right? Because it is a special memory, but to our diagram, let's put that uh, on the volatile and non-volatile manner, right? Okay, so moving to the uh, diagram. So here we are going to draw the uh, memory devices. Right, so you can start writing with me. So majorly, uh, there are two types, which is volatile. And under the volatile, register memory. <clears throat> this is uh, inside CPU, central processing unit it says, and uh, the next is the cache memory. In modern processors, cache also resides in the uh, CPU and the RAM. or what you call random access memory. So non-volatile you can have uh, the secondary storage And uh, like hard disk, CDs, DVDs, etc., as well as ROM, which we call read only memory. <clears throat> right, so that is how memory devices are being uh, categorized. So just uh, take it down here.
Let me know when you are done. Right. So <clears throat> next is about the uh, processing devices. So central processing unit, CPU, is taken as the ma major processing device in the computer, right? So uh, CPU is involved in every, uh, each and every instruction which is uh, feed into the computer through the input devices and all these uh, storage devices. Uh, it basically do the arithmetical and logical processing inside the CPU. So to do that inside the CPU, there is something called arithmetic and logic unit, right? Where we are going to uh, learn about it at the next lesson, right? And apart from that, uh, if your computer got a separate graphic card, there is a graphical processing units as well, right? So it will help you to process the graphics, right? So if you are playing a very uh, uh, high-end uh, game, right, which has very high-end graphics, and or else uh, if you are doing some video editing or some uh, complex audio editing type of things, you need a separate graphical processing unit, right? Because they have lots of colors and tones uh, inside the graphics that they have to uh, maintain in a very smooth manner. So for that particular thing, you need a separate graphic card with, with a GPU, which is graphical processing unit. And graphical processing unit is like larger and capable well, it's like it's like larger in the amount of cores, but GPU cannot perform what CPU does, and CPU cannot perform what GPU does, right? So they are performing two separate things. CPU is taking care of arithmetical and logical things, and GPU is taking care of the graphics, right? So uh, those two can be taken as the two processing devices in the uh, computer system, <clears throat> right? So we can uh, list them under the hardware specification when we are doing the short note. And I'm, I'm going to the uh, network devices as well. And we are going to learn about these devices in the network lesson, which is the sixth lesson of yours, right? In very detail, 
right? And we uh, we are planning to draw these kind of network diagrams. So when you uh, know the uh, uh, the networking, you will get to know about the devices. So for the moment, I'll tell you like there are different kinds of devices are there to get connected with the network, right? So you are having switches and hubs, which allow you to uh, connect the uh, particular number of uh, computers together. Right now, if you think about your laboratory at school, um, you are having a switch uh, where they have uh, placed it on the wall with a metal box, right? So you can see there are like some bulbs are like on in and off in uh, inside it. So that is called the uh, switch. So that will help to uh, network like all the computers in your laboratory, like from each and every computer, uh, they are like taking a separate wire into that particular device and connects it uh, uh, and connects, connects to create the LANs, local area networks, right? So don't worry about what is local area network for the moment, just think about network. Now network means there are two or more computer devices which can communicate with each other. So it is called a network. Right, so there are various kinds of devices like hub, switch, firewalls, servers, different kinds of servers, right, and routers, gateways, right, those kind of things are there. And as well as like when you are trying to connect a network cable into the computer, uh, so like into the computer system, it is uh, like the computer system is given you that facility through the NIC, Network Interface Card. Right? right? We are going to talk about these things, right? So just for the moment, uh, remember these devices and cables are needed, right? So let's uh, take down these two, then we can go for the software part, right? So there are two more categories. One is the processing devices. Final one is network devices, right? So regarding the processing devices, there are only two, which is called CPU Then the GPU. Right, and regarding the network devices, you need to list, you have to list all those things hub, switch routers, gateways, uh, cables, is that all? Ah, and NIC, cables, can you ready? NIC, can you ready? This stands for network interchange card, interface card, I think.
Okay. Let me know when you are done, people. Yeah, one is done already. How about others? Okay, right, so let's move to the software part. Now, software is something uh, intangible, right? And uh, it has some categories as well. So majorly, softwares are divided into two major categories, which is called the system softwares and the application softwares. Now, application software are the softwares that we use to do our work, like to do day-to-day -day work. Now, what I'm using here now are like two uh, application softwares. One is Zoom, that is to uh, keep a video conference and conferencing with you. And the second one is PDF, Portable uh, Document Reader. Uh, so like, uh, the, those two are the applications that I'm using for the moment. So almost everything, like almost everything is like more than 95%, we refers to the this particular thing or like uh, the, this particular category, which is called the application software. And regarding the system software, there are three types of things that you need to understand. One is there is an op uh, operating system one part, right, system software, it's the major part. And the other two, there are something called utility programs, right? And uh, there is something called language translators, right? So those have been divided uh, based on that uh, particular facts, right? So, um, uh, when it comes to the uh, system software, if you take operating systems, there are different kinds of operating systems, right? So uh, here I have uh, shown you some of the operating systems, right? Like uh, OS X, Red Hat, Windows, Linux, those kind of things, right? And uh, the application softwares are as follows, like anything that you use to uh, make your things easy on these days, right? And uh, utility software is called the software that help us to keep our things in a particular manner, in a smooth manner, right? And uh, as an example, if you take antivirus software in your computer, it is a very good uh, utility software. So it's task, there, there is a specific task. So it is given uh, the ability or, or given the help to carry out the application software and the operating system in a fine, uh, like a smooth manner, right? So that is the uh, uh, thing that we can do uh, through the utility software, right? And uh, the last one is called the uh, language translators. Now, language translators are there for what? Like, like any other human translator, uh, like if we need to uh, talk with someone else, uh, we need a particular translator to translate ourselves into that particular foreign language or the, or the foreigner. So translator is the same. It will convert a program into a code called machine code. Now, when we are programming in the, in the uh, lesson number nine, we are going to learn about the program. So that particular programming uh, is done by 
a language called high level languages so high level languages should be converted into ones and zeros before it get executes right so uh, for that purpose the translators are needed so translators are there to convert what is given by the user in his user friendly uh, work environment and uh, into the machine friendly working environment so apita teven ne have ones and zeros kiyane but machine can understand ones and zeros that is why uh, or like that is what we call generally machine is understanding ones and zeros but not the user so what user does is he will use an application to write the code and then it will compile or it will interpret right so come the, the the programs that can do compiling it is called a compiler the programs which has the ability to uh, translate it is called a translator so uh, like uh, i'm sorry not the translator it's the interpret the languages which can do the interpretation which uh, there we uh, call them the interpreters and there is a difference between compiler and interpreter you get to know about those when we are doing the programming language now so for the moment just remember there are two translators which is, which we call the compiler and interpreter right uh <clears throat> yeah since it is uh, regarding the software i'll uh, go through these two things as well now one category is that the uh, uh, software as can be decomposed is uh, same the uh, system software and application software and uh, we can categorize the softwares upon this particular uh, fact as well which we call open source software and proprietary software so like open source means the program is available to anyone so he or she can change the uh, uh, structure of the uh, particular program then can use for our purpose or some group of members purpose and i'm sorry proprietary software that actually you have to pay and take now if you think about the windows operating system it's a proprietary uh, proprietary software so where you have to pay like 50 to 20000 to take a key regarding the windows right but if you think about the android operating system you are paying nothing to purchase that android operating system it's free it's given by the google and it is free it can be used and change the appearance as we want so that is why they are using android operating system in different forms in different ways right so uh, if it is a proprietary software we don't have that ability we can't change the windows as we want change karna kiya kya nahi aap ita desktop pe kitne din pura vinas kar raha hai hema karna kiya nahi it is called custom message if you really want to like change the entire thing so uh, Uh, that cannot be done in proprietary software section right okay people did you got the idea just confirm me yes sir right okay great so let's uh, have a separate diagram for the uh, softwares right so as we had a diagram for hardware we are going to have a separate diagram for software so majorly divided into two parts system software Just a second, people. So, application software has many uh, examples, right? 
like word processing softwares. and uh, <clears throat> games right you see players right presentation software there are many and system software divided into three parts First is the uh, operating systems. And utility software. And this is, let's say language translators, not just translators. Right, and operating, yeah, people operating software and operating systems. Operating systems, you can have uh, Windows, Macintosh, Right, Ubuntu, those kind of things. And regarding the utility software, you can say the task manager is a utility software. Right, you know how to take the task manager, right? By right clicking on the desktop, we can take the task manager. Where is this task manager? Oh, yeah. So task manager will show all the details of the computer and all the tasks of the computer for the moment, right? So, the, the enemy applications, some are like uh, started by the user, some are started by the uh, particular, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, service, right, particular service, right? So, it can be Windows, it can be something else, right? But the processings are going over here. Right, so task manager, we don't use it for our day-to-day -day workings, but we will be using for that particular technical terms, right? So likewise, ta task manager, uh, disk defragmentation, we are going to talk about that uh, in the operating system lesson, disk defragmentation. Right, and language translators, there are two. Compiler and interpreter. Okay, so uh, complete the diagram, people.
All right, two are done. How about others? Yes, other three, how about you? Right, great. Okay, and uh, uh, under this, uh, it's better you uh, draw that uh, software classification regarding the, uh, the ownership, right? So let's just write it like this. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Right, uh, so this will be the examples and the next classification, right? So please have that too. One is done, how about others?
okay so the last two things is about the firmwares and the light bulb so i told you about the rom right now this firmware is described as firmware is a computer program that is embedded in a hardware device that is in an essential part of the hardware right so <clears throat> so these things can be found on the motherboard of your computer right uh, we basically rom are taken as the uh, firmware firmwares as well which we call read only memory because roms are given the program by the manufacturer and fix it onto the motherboard so rom can be taken as a non volatile memory as well as a firmware right so basically these things are containing most basic informations but critical informations which is need to boot up the computer right and liveware people uh, the, uh, the the per person or the uh, the entity that use the computer right so i'm not going to uh, write anything about firmware and liveware because in the very first diagram we talk about the firmware and liveware so uh, you don't need uh, anything like further than that right and then after we got the uh, data processing part let's uh, keep the data processing part for the next week right and uh, let's go to the uh, number system lesson right to do some calculations right okay and if if you got any questions regarding the part that we have done so you can ask right meanwhile i'll uh, arrange the other lesson all right so last week we went through the addition and the subtraction yeah uh can anyone tell me did i gave this as a homework or did we like uh, go through these things like make a Kerala Bellu other and did I give it as an homework? Yes, anyone? And people, uh, have you like uh, done with these two parts? All right, okay. So uh, yeah, let me illustrate how this is done. Right then, some hard bit amat kaite ni, right? So I'll I'll show you how the calculation is done. So the first one. Is that we are going to do the uh, subtraction one zero zero one? We are subtracting one zero one. Sorry, one zero zero from that. So one minus zero gives you one because one is bigger, zero is smaller. So one minus zero will give you one. Zero minus zero still give you zero, but. If you when you need to minus one out of zero, you won't be able to do that. So you are going to ask it from the other side for one particular group. So it will give you a one group which has the value of two. So now it's two minus one will give you a one, and this one now becomes a zero because one group is sent to the other side. Groups so, groups 
a group එක මෙහා පැත්තට දුන්නම so 1 minus 1 which is 0 so this is the answer for the first calculation right so for the second calculation right let's see how we are going to do this 1 minus 1 is 0 0 minus 1 you can't so you have to take a one group which has the value of 2 2 minus 1 is 1 now this one now become a 0 so 0 minus 0 is 0 1 minus 0 is 1 here it arises the same problem so you are taking a particular uh, group which has the value of 2 2 minus 1 is 1 You don't have anything over here. So it is zero again. Right. Any doubts regarding this? Is this clear, people? Right, okay. How about others? One says okay. How about others? All right. Okay, now today we are going to move to the uh, calculation part called the bitwise operations, right? So let me take your note first. take it from the folder. Right, now, yeah, we are done with the addition and subtraction. Here we are comes to the bitwise logic operations right now bitwise logic operations there are four for you to understand which have the names like not and o and xor right so not o and an xor will show you what's happen when it applies in between two operands right so first, uh, and when it comes to the not, it is just talking about one particular component that is going to get affected. No two operands, just one. But in all other two, oper uh, all other three uh, bitwise operators, they are involving with uh, two operands, right? Let me show you the things. So. First, I'm taking, uh, I'm putting the heading called bitwise operations. All right, so the first one is called the bitwise not. Right, so the bitwise not is indicates by this symbol, right? So as an example, now remember when it's a bitwise operation, this is for binary number system only.
So if I say not 10, now basically what we are doing is we are representing 10 in 8 bits. Right, so right yeah so generally we represent in 8 bits it's a general thing right so 10 not 10 if you want to uh, clarify what is not 10 first we have to write what is 10 is in binary so as you can see we can have the place values 1 2 4 and 8 so we can create 10 like put in one over here and one over here and making the other one as zero right so we have to fill another four bits at the front to represent 10 in binary value now not 10 means converting the zeros into ones and ones into zeros so not 10 means one 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 zero one zero one right so this is what is the uh, output for the not 10 got it people take the logic right when you when we need to uh, illustrate not 10 we write the positive 10 in binary right then we convert right no matter we not yet then the right so that is regarding the bitwise not operation right now the second part is about the bitwise and right we uh, indicate this using a dot 
I'm sorry, not the dot. That is for logic gates. It is from this n percent mark. All right. So now from here downwards, like bitwise and bitwise o and bitwise xor can be done for two operands. They will deka kada karana purvam, right? Then ne kasa reveni, right? And uh, as an example, now in in your book, uh, they have what are the examples that they were using? Ah, yeah, like come up, man. Because here, today, this year, da, today, you will buy something. No, man. We we will take something. Uh, yeah, something like this. Hold on. So I'm going to take. Uh, Yeah, so I'm going to consider the bitwise operation in between these two. At my middle of the yard, at the name, we're going to make a seat the way in the day, had a pen and only some. Right, uh, so let me take it down first. So this represents twelve. This represents twelve. This represents ten. All right. So my bitwise operation is in between twelve and ten. Right. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write what is twelve and what is ten. Right. So this is twelve, and this is ten. How we are going to recognize that? These are the place values we got. Right. So eight plus four is twelve. Eight plus two is ten. Right. So when we are doing the bitwise and operation, uh, there is a way that we can uh, perform this and operation in between the places. Up may place second place second. May bitwise operation ne kaara gan do. So in bit the the and operation in between ones and zeros happens like this. Right, so this is a separate uh, table that I am uh, drawing. So it's better you draw that as well. Right, if you matter not take it up on the numana gati by couldn't draw it in one that with an angina. Right, not take a mamaragani. This is a and this is not a. So when this is zero, this becomes one. When this is one, this becomes zero. And here for and, I have a and I have b and I have a and b. So these are the four combination that a one and zero can represent. Right, so both can be zeros, both can be ones. When a is zero, b can be one, and when a is one, b can be zero. So this is kind of a multiplication, right? Zero into zero is zero. Zero into one is zero. 
1 into 0 is 0, 1 into 1 is 1, right? So, this and act as multiplication, right? It's not purely multiplication, but it act as a multiplication. So, based on that, we can solve this. So, 0 C, uh, and 0 gives you a 0. 0 and 1 gives you a 0 again. 1 and 0 gives you a 0 again. 1 and 1 gives you a 1. So, all these things 0 and zeros. So, 0 and zeros will give you zeros. Right? And you can finalize your answer if they ask you to convert this into a binary. So just convert it into the binary. That's all. Hari, Terunadha, clear the right. Great. Okay, shall we uh, note this down? Then we can go for the uh, X O R and O later. Uh, now, now. Yeah, uh, in your note, you have separate calculations. So, at the same place, you can note this down, right? Or you can go with your notebook. Doesn't matter, any of the way you want. No, no, no. Lalindi, which is not. Lalindi, it's not actually 12 into 10 dual. That's why I uh, told you it's act as multiplication, not, not, not representing multiplication. Multiplication act, act like acts like multiplication, right? The multiplication nika vage ki ene ke vitarak mata pati aada. That's all. I'm moving a little bit up. Uh, 
No, we don't, we don't. Uh, Talendi? Uh, hold on, do hold on, just a second. I'll, I'll, uh, uh, since it is in the binary. Um, I'll go through it and tell you the revised color here now. Do we need to uh, show the base or not? Normally we are not going going with the base uh, like the base. Let me know when you are done, people. Right, okay. So, bitwise O happens like this. And the, it indicates by a, a long line, right? So if I take the same thing like uh, 12 or 10, right? So now you know the drill 12 is written in binary, and 10 is written in binary as well. Right, so the uh, O operator, bitwise operator, behave like this. Like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1. So here, if you find 1 at any particular operand, your output 
of the operation is going to be one. So zero and zero is the place where you get take a zero. In all other places, it gives you a one, right? So in the same way, if we do the uh, 12 or 10, so this is going to be a zero, this is going to be a one, this is going to be a one, and this is going to be a one. So that is what you call bitwise O operation. And bitwise XOR, now XOR means exclusive OR. And it has a different than the normal O, right? So bitwise XOR and the symbol is this, right? So if it says 12 XOR 10 and it goes in the same way regarding the representation, And the XOR happens in between two operands. This right zero uh, like like the, the logic behind the XOR is when the operands are identical, it produces you a zero. So zero, zero gives you a zero, one, one gives you a zero. If the operands are not identical, it produces you a one, right? So according to that, here you are getting a zero, here you are getting a one, here you are getting a one, here you are getting a zero, and all these places get in a zero because there are two zeros. So it is the operation of 12 XOR 10. All right, as usual, copy it down, people. Let me know when you are done, right? Okay, one is done. How about the others? All right. Okay, three are done. Others, are you done too? Right. Okay, so um, let's do some uh, math. Do means like uh, let's just do one particular question, right? And you will be uh, able to find it. And uh, just a second, people, I need to uh, clarify something.
Yeah, here we go. Question. Perform not and O X O R bitwise operations in between. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not should be here. In between hundred and seventy-three and hundred and ninety-eight. Right. So that is the first part and the second part. What is the value of not one sixty eight? Right. So send me the answers, right? You know what to be done.
So you only need to uh, send me the answer, right? Uh, for n it is this, for o it is this, and for x o r it is this. It's a binary number you need to send, right? All right, uh, Nikini. Yes, okay. Uh, and Nikini, there is a problem with. Ah, no, no, no. Nikini, uh, there's a problem with and. Lalithi, your and is okay. Or is okay. XOR is okay. And uh, the not. Yeah, that's okay. Nikini, uh, do a and works like a multiplication. So when you find a zero inside, like, like any of the operands, you are going to receive zero. If both the operands are one, then only you are going to receive a one dual. So just check. Tell me your answers are correct. Great.
लेकिन ये डिड यू गॉट पता है सेट दो पहन मी यस या दैट्स करेक्ट तो बट यू आर हैविंग लाइक मोर देन लाइक एट बिट्स दो राइट like it's starting from 1 3 zeros oh hold on hold on hold on ah 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 pahan bhi do us there is a slight mistake in the and operation balana antima ekane the very last one is going to uh, get you like that right okay yes pahan me uh, yeah yeah your yeah, uh, o representation is okay but do you are still using more than 8 bits do again it's it's only need 8 bits do again issarahata bindu hatarak daana kiyana eka aniwara nemei do right so we are making man the metana bit बिंदु हतरा किस रहा था दम में टू मेक एवरीथिंग एस एन एट बिट रिप्रेजेंटेशन आप ये अटैक में ना करना माय ये क कंप्लीट करन right uh okay so i'm going to do the uh, calculations right since there are some uh, slight mistakes of some of you so here we go so 173 is represented as 1 0 1 0 One one zero one. This is one seventy three and one ninety eight. It's represented as yeah. Pahan me doa 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 ke yar back kine bit attai ni doa penna no ni doa bindu hatra kohma tisra har dalati no. एक करा निपा बोलते यू ओनली नीड एट बिट रिप्रेजेंटेशन द मैं बोला ना कन्वर्ट करा मैं बिट टाटो कोहो मत देना सो यू डोंट नीड टू हैव लाइक मोर थिंग्स एट द बिगिनिंग दूर 
Can bit attacking the my represent when known, right? Nikini, yes, your first one is correct, Dua. Right, so 198. So it is one, one, triple zeros, and one double zero. Right. So first I'm doing the end operation. So 173 and 198. So it's going to be one into zero is zero, zero into zero is zero, one into one it is one, one into zero is zero, zero into zero is zero, one into zero is zero, zero into one is zero, one into one is one. Right? Pahan me dua, potak palan wagi meka, potak ehit mehit vela ke dua. Okay, sir. Right. So, I'm going to take a copy of this. Yes, Nikini, that is correct. The operation. Right, so the operation I'll do it right over here. And this is for the XOR. And 173.0198. We can have it 101101. One, 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 one. Right, that is the way that we are going to represent 173 or 198. Right, did I miss anything? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, make a cake of water. Sorry, sorry, it's my mistake. This should be one. Anyway, end operation will not change, but definitely the O operation will change. This is like one, one. So this is going to change as one as well. This is one. Right, and uh, yeah, Nikini the XOR, yes. Yes, that is correct, that is correct. Okay, great. So 173 XOR 198. So you are going to have like one over here because operands are different and one over here as well. For the third place, it's zero because operands are identical. Second one, it's one. This is zero. This is one. This is one. And this is zero. Right? So it's going to be the answers for all three operations. And as the final one, I was asking the not 168. So 168 can be written as one zero one zero one triple zeros. So not 168 will give you 0, 01, 0, 01, 0, 01, 01, 01, right? So that is the representation, right? Okay, is it clear people? Right, any doubts regarding this? Any questions? Pahanmi Nikini, was it clear? Yes, Nikini, that's correct too. 
right okay right okay right okay all right so then after there's a very little theory part in this uh, lesson let's do that and then we can end the session right so the theory part is about the character data representation in computer now uh, like in computer now so far we have learned about the uh, number systems which we learn it will be helped to represent data inside a computer so the very first kind of representation they use to represent data inside the computer is called the binary coded decimal representation bcd now in bcd they use it to represent values from 0 to 9 only right so it's only only a number representation that they have done so to do that what they have done is uh, one particular decimal value is represented by four bit binary value right so in bcd what they have done is so This is the uh, the decimal value. And this is the BCD code. So for BCD, as I told you, they use four bits. So for represent zero, one, two, three, four are being taken, right? And to represent one, they represent zero, 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 one so how they are going to represent this they consider the place values which are one two four eight the place values right so likewise it's easy so for represent two zero zero one zero for represent three zero zero one one for represent four zero one zero zero represent five zero one zero one Six zero one one zero seven zero one 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 eight and nine is given by one three zeros and one two zero one right so which is very simple when we know the uh, place values we can write this without a problem right so eight is given like this and nine is given like this right so remember in bcd conversion it is just decimal numbers or decimal characters representing using a binary value which has four bits now as an example suzu right as an example if someone asked you to uh, represent 12 which is in decimal value in bcd so we are going to represent it like this this is one and this is two so it is, it is the representation of bcd got it people so each and every character should represent in four bit value All right, so with the uh, evolution of the computer, like this was for the uh, very old days, uh, they were running out of the uh, options. So, so, Tati is doing a class. Can you run to Ammi?